Hello, I'm Ivor Mason. I'm Professor of Developmental Biology at King's College London, where my research focuses upon signals which serve to sculpt the embryo, with particular emphasis upon how the brain develops. I also teach medical, dental and biological science undergraduate students in a number of subjects, including histology. And in our histology sessions, we make extensive use of microscopes. And this is a very quick guide on how to set up a microscope easily at the start of each session. Setting up the compound microscope is done in three stages. Stage one, focusing the objective lens on the specimen and adjusting the eyepieces. Stage two, focusing the condenser lens on the specimen. And stage three, adjusting the substage diaphragm for optimum illumination. While setting up the microscope, it may be useful to consult the labelled diagram of the component parts of a typical compound microscope that's supplied with the handouts for the class and is available also in the online material. The first step in focusing the lens on the specimen is to rack the substage condenser into its highest position. Here's the substage condenser and it's moved by the knob on the left hand side of the microscope. Substage condenser and here it is being moved to its highest position with the knob on the left hand side of the microscope. Next we use the larger of the ridged wheels, the coarse focus, located at the back of the microscope to lower the stage as far away from the objective lens as possible. I'll repeat that again. Using the large ridged wheel we lower the whole stage as far away from the objective lens turret as possible. The objective lens turret is then rotated so that the lowest power lens is in line above the specimen. In our case it's the four times of objective and that's the one with the red marking around the base. Open your slide box and select a slide to be used in focusing the microscope. I've suggested number 57. Place it on the stage and use the curved side arm to hold it securely in place on the stage. Now switch on the light source and adjust it to about half power. First plug the microscope in at the wall and switch it on. Then switch it on the side and turn up the light all the way around initially and then back round to about halfway. Switch it on, turn up the light, and adjust it to about 50% illumination. You can see the light shining through the condenser. For those of you with Nikon microscopes, the adjustment switch and dial is on this left hand side of the microscope at the base. Using the spot of light as a guide, position the specimen directly below the objective. This is done using the movement controls for the stage, which can move the stage towards you and away from you, and also left and right. And position the specimen, which you'll see is stained pink, so it's directly above the spot of light coming through the condenser. And here I'll show that in close up. Now, still looking at the stage with your eyes level with it, slowly rack it up as far as it will go. Never do this with one of the higher power objectives, only with a low power objective. 
now looking through the eyepieces slowly rack the stage back down using the course control and then the finer outer knob until the specimen comes into sharp focus. Next, with both eyes open, adjust the distance between the eyepieces until you can see a single image comfortably. Some people take a while to acquire this ability. We're now going to adjust the eyepieces to suit the visual characteristics of each of your eyes. Our microscopes have one fixed and one adjustable eyepiece, the adjustable one having a knurled knob on it which allows it to move up and down when we twist it. We're now going to adjust the eyepieces independently to suit the different characteristics that you may well have for each of your eyes. First, close the eye looking through the adjustable eyepiece while leaving the other one open and adjust the fine focusing control at the base of the microscope to bring the specimen sharply into focus for that eye. Now switch eyes, close the eye looking through the fixed eyepiece and without changing the focus at the base of the microscope, just use the focusing ring on the other eyepiece to bring the image sharply into focus such that a sharp image in focus is seen through both eyepieces. Here it is again. First through the fixed eyepiece, adjusting the focus at the base of the microscope, then through the adjustable eyepiece without touching the focus control at the base and just using the control on the eyepiece. Your specimen's now in focus and we can now switch to focusing the condenser. And first to do this we need to open the diaphragm on the condenser fully. Now switch to the 10 times objective lens, it's the one with the yellow band, from the 4 times that we were using before. Refocus the specimen, if necessary, using the fine focus control. Then hold a pencil point over the light source close to the glass plate. And move the condenser lens away from the stage, downwards, using the single ridged wheel located below the stage that we used at the start of the session. And do this until the pencil point is sharply in focus. The tip of the pencil will initially appear out of focus. By moving the condenser, you can bring it into a sharp focus. Having done that, defocus the condenser very slightly to take the pencil just away from being sharp. Finally, we come to adjusting the substage iris diaphragm to optimally illuminate the specimen. Firstly, carefully withdraw one of the removable eyepieces from the specimen and stand it upright in a safe place. Then, looking down the empty tube, close the iris diaphragm and then reopen it so that the light fills about two thirds of the field of view. And this should be done whenever you change objective lenses for optimal illumination. When that's done, return the eyepiece into place and you're all set. Just to remind you, the iris diaphragm which you're adjusting is located on the condenser. And this is the sort of thing that you'll see looking down the uh, tube. Your microscope is now set up and ready to use. And you should go through this procedure at the beginning of any of the demonstrations.